Hey guys, welcome back and Merry Christmas. And thanks for tuning in to my review of the Olight PL2, which as you can see, is sitting on top of my Glock 17 Gen 4 right here. So I'm gonna talk throughout this video about my experience using the Olight PL2 Valkyrie on top of this Glock uh, through a class that I did at Front Sight. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit as well as cover some of the gear that I used. But before I do that, I just wanna tell you about a sale that's actually happening this weekend on the PL2, maybe the PL2, but a bunch of stuff on olightstore.com. Uh, this weekend, that's December 15th to 18th, and by the time you're seeing this video, we're already a little ways into that. Uh, but I don't know for sure what's going up for sale, but I know that they're having some specials, and I love Olight products at this point, so I wanted to let you guys know about that sale that's going on. As I said, I am really loving Olight products lately. Uh, this guy right here is my absolute favorite flashlight period right now <laughs> for carrying around every day at least. Now there's better flashlights for various situations, but for carrying around on a daily basis, this is it guys. I think my search has maybe ended. Clips onto the front of your, um, your ball cap there. Nice cl clicky switch there, and then we've got a magnetic recharging base plate right there with the recharging cable that comes with the light. Takes the rechargeable uh, CR123 battery in there. Love it so much that I went ahead and bought the S2R baton, baton which I keep in my car, uh, constantly plugged into a USB port in there so that it is always uh, charged and ready for whatever emergency may come along. This one I didn't buy. Olight sent this one to me for testing and review. These two. I purchased them and again purchased the other one of the other copy of that. But uh, back to the PL2 Valkyrie, we can cover sort of how it works real quick because you'll be interested in that. So the switches are right here on the side. It's ambidextrous. You use it from either side, like I said. And all it is is a little push forward. And there you go. Clicked on. If you do two sides at once, I uh, didn't do it then. If you get it just right, press them both at the same time. There, now you see it. We've got a strobe, okay? So you've got the option of strobe or steady burn. And again, to turn that strobe off, all you do is hit one of them. I hit both of them just by you know, muscle memory there. But it looks like from any position, from on or off, you can turn that strobe on. So that's worth talking about too. But that's a perfect position really because when it is on your, let's say Glock 17, right hand or left hand, it's just a matter of extending that trigger finger Give it a little press right there, pressing it again, and that's it. Now you notice there, that was a little tricky to turn off again. Why is that so? Well, you kind of have to get it just right, and it feels like you could just press it in, but no, that does not work for me. I feel like I find that I have to press it straight forward. Okay, that's also the other mode that it has, so momentary on. So you press that and hold it for a second or less, and you're in momentary. See, if you press it quickly enough and let it right off, then you're on steady burn. But then if you do kind of a, a longer press, press and hold, momentary. Okay, so it's got momentary, steady burn, and then also strobe. Those are the three modes that it's got. I wish it had a low mode or a medium mode or something like that. Something that's like maybe half of the standard um, standard brightness. And what is the standard brightness on it? 1200 lumens. That's nuts. Like insane. That is a lot of light. And as their marketing states, the, they're kind of like pushing this as a light that is intended to blind your attacker. And they say that here in the marketing uh, text somewhere. Um, that's really sort of what they're marketing it as. You know, after having taken a class using um, lights, for shooting, I, I don't really see that as the way that you want to use your light. And we'll talk a little bit about that class that I took here at this point. First, here's the holster that I use. This one made by MIE Productions, available on Amazon.com. Doesn't come with these loops right here. Swap those in from another holster in order to be able to use it with a heavier belt, thicker belt. But as you can see there, holds the gun and the light perfectly. MIE Productions on Amazon did not send me this holster. Bought it for about 70 bucks myself. It takes about two weeks is what I remember, maybe less to get them in hand, which is a lot faster than some other folks. So. All Kydex, as you can see there, you can get it in black and coyote and maybe some other colors. 
And uh, what did I say, 70 bucks? But uh, yeah, it's worked out fine for the class that I took and used it the entire time that I was taking that class down at Front Sight. Um, it was the two-day tactical handgun class, which is sort of the, the class that comes after the four-day defensive handgun class, if you DG from that. And so it's kind of like jumping from elementary school to high school in a way. So there's a lot more fun stuff, a lot more interesting stuff. And as I said, one of the things we did was a night shoot using this flashlight or using any flashlight. And you could use a handheld flashlight or you, you could use weapon mounted flashlight for that class. I chose to actually do both, but for the portion, uh, for a good portion of the time, I was using the Olight for the, uh, the illuminated shooting that I wanted to do. So we did a, a simulator bay and I used this and I found that when I had gloved hands, or yeah, when I was shooting with gloved hands, I found that it was kind of difficult to get the tactile feel that I needed on that button. And some of the time I couldn't get it on properly, I couldn't get it off properly, because I just didn't have the right amount of um, well, tactile response there with my finger. So it worked better when I was using it barehanded, so I tried to do that for most of the shooting that I did. That's just one little side note. But uh, also, as I said before, 1200 lumens is a crazy amount of light, okay? And so one of the things they focused on or kind of emphasized in that class was, when you're using your light uh, to identify your attacker, which is the main reason for having a light on a pistol, it, it, um, it is actually a detriment to you, the shooter, to have something that is ridiculously bright. Number one, when you turn a light on, you're, you've identified yourself and your position. So if your attacker has a weapon, now they're coming to the last place they saw you. But also, I mean, so there's a lot of movement involved in after action drills and turning your light on and off and on and off, you know, basically to sort of illuminate a spot, get out of there, illuminate the spot, get out of there. Um, and in, in the process of all of that, you don't want to lose your night vision. You want to be able to, again, turn that off and move through the darkness where possible so that you are not giving your position away. And so having something that's 1200 lumens yeah, it probably does blind the attacker as their marketing suggests, but you know what? It also, when you're shining a head up against a white wall, blinds you, the shooter. So it probably is too much light for simple home defense use, and that's kind of why I wish there were uh, two modes to it. And I want to give a shout out real quick to another YouTuber, a guy named John over at 180 Second Ideas. I'll have his channel linked down in the description below. I was kind of perusing and looking for other Olight videos um, he did a vid video on this and also a video on the Olight PL Mini. And he talked about this exact same point that, um, you know, a really high lumen count can be detrimental inside. But in more outdoor situations, completely different story, completely different story. This thing will throw and throw and throw and really illuminate what it is you're trying to shoot. So yeah, again, if you are outside, putting this on a rifle, putting this on a pistol, whatever the case may be, maybe you're hunting, maybe you're gonna be out at night, um, having this on the pistol that you're gonna be out with could be a very, very smart idea. According to Olight, it throws about, where's their statement on that? Uh, it's on here someplace, 235 meters, according to them. Also, it is IPX6 water resistant which means that you can pour some water over it. Over it. You don't want to dunk it. Uh, that would be IPX8 uh, for submersion. But um, yeah, I tested this out and it actually did just fine. Poured a bottle of water over the top of it while it was running. No issues, didn't see any leakage, no, uh, no potential for leakage. So also it says that it's drop safe to one meter. Now, I'm not gonna drop the light alone. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I would think that it would be on a gun if and when I dropped it. So I put it on my old Glock 23 and did a few drops with that, took it out, dropped it in some cold, hard dirt. What did I do? Five, 10 times, 10 drops, bunch of drops. Got the Glock nice and dirty, got the light pretty good and dirty. And uh, no issues, no issues through all those drops. Didn't intentionally drop it on any rocks. Might have got one or two in the dirt there, couldn't tell but it survived the drop, so yeah. Survived the water test, survived the drop test. Uh, no issues as far as durability is concerned. Now one last thing, when they say 1200 lumens, that's what it will start off at with the most, um, with the best batteries you can possibly put in there. 
and then it will drop slowly to about 600 lumens before it dies off. And so that's kind of what that indicates right there. And apparently it's about 70 minutes that you can expect to get out of it. Uh, a little more information, the Cree XHP 35 High is the battery that we have in there. Uh, any other information you want to get off of there, there it is. All right, we did get kind of a weight on that, but let's go ahead and weigh it with the batteries in it. And uh, we'll also kind of show you one more issue that I had with the light that I really, really need to address uh, before you guys make your decision on whether the PL2 is for you. All right, so with the batteries in it, and we'll show you what batteries are in it here in a second, we've got four ounces. Four ounces. So it adds four ounces to the end of your gun. Again, shooting a Glock 17 throughout a two-day course, no issue. No issue. Didn't find that to be a lot of weight in the slightest bit. Uh, one other thing before we move on to opening up the light. Here's another gun that it might fit on pretty well. This is the SIG P320, obviously, with the upgraded trigger for those of you curious about it. All the drama surrounding the SIG P320, there was a lot of it. A lot of it had to do with the trigger, and so there was a voluntary upgrade. SIG sent me this gun for testing and review. Just barely got it in hand today. Haven't shot it even a single round, but here it is with the Olight on it. You can see that that fits just fine. I'll mention though that if we push it forward, it does slide, push it back. The reason why, because it's set up with the Glock attachment in there, and there is actually a um, a Picatinny attachment that you can you can swap out. So it comes with this Torx wrench. You can swap that piece out, make it fit Picatinny more um, more correctly. All right, now let's get to the inside. Show you how the batteries come out. You can see that there's this little eject symbol there and pull to open. So just do this, and that's how that opens up right there. What we have on the inside it looks like our looks like the original Olight batteries that must have come with this thing. So that's what we have, non-rechargeable, as you can see there. All right, and so um, here's, I'm gonna set those aside for a second. I'm gonna show you exactly the issue uh, that I did have <clears throat> with this light during the course of the, the shooting I did during that class. Again, came in and out and in and out and in and out of that holster many, many times throughout the class. So if anything was going to kind of wobble or come loose, it would have done so during a class like that, and it did. And let me try to describe for you what exactly happened. So, and I showed this briefly in sort of my uh, front sight um, gear check, but uh, what happened was, and I didn't really, I wasn't really able to identify it at the time, but here's what happened. This whole plate right here, you can see that this body, okay, all this body and this plate up here are actually two separate pieces, and I think you can make that out. So this was like locked onto the gun perfectly. And so that was, felt solid on the gun, but the body felt like it was shifting while it was on the gun. Took it off, found out that it was actually this piece that was kind of shifting around. Solved that pretty simply. So what, what, what I needed to do though, was to take out this hinge pin right here. So I just used one of my little AR-15 punches, punched out that pin and uh, got access to a couple of screws that are just kind of like straight behind this panel, a couple of screws that uh, cinch that down a little tighter. So those two screws cinch this whole plate down to the body a little better. I pulled them out first, um, degreased them, then locked tighted them, screwed them back in, good and snug. And since then, no movement whatsoever, not through the shooting, not through anything else I've done with it. So it's been solid ever since. Now you might look at this issue and say, well, that's a total deal breaker. If parts or pieces are gonna be coming loose on the light as I'm shooting it, getting high round counts or whatever, uh, that is just as much a deal breaker as parts or pieces coming loose on the gun itself. I would not accept that. I wouldn't trust it if it were doing that. And so you may see the weapon light in the exact same way. On the other hand, you may look at this in the same way you look at a sort of a higher end pocket knife, which will loosen up in the pivot after hard or repeated or long term use and uh, just simply needs a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of care from time to time. If you look at your weapon light in the same way, maybe you don't see this as such a big deal. I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Honestly, I was able to fix it. I was able to take care of the issue. I know that it's gonna be fine from here on out, so that's kind of where I stand. Want to do a quick comparison of the PL2 against a few other weapon lights that I've been using for a while. 
There are a wide variety of them on the market. I don't even own the best ones, but a couple of common ones that are out there. I'll show it to you right now. We'll bring the scale back out just for, for weight's sake. Uh, one of the most common ones, one of the ones that uh, if, if you've ever bought a weapon light, you've probably considered this one or maybe you bought it. That is the TLR1 from Streamlight. I'm not gonna cover lumen count because this changes like constantly, like every year that changes. So this is one of the really, really old ones with a pretty low lumen count, particularly compared to that Olight. But uh, the weight should be just about the same and there are gonna be you know various versions of it. But uh, the weight on this guy will come in at, wait for it, uh, 4.1 ounces, so basically the same as the Olight, and again, that's with batteries in it. Um, as far as size, you can see that they are fairly identical. Not really identical, but very, very close. Okay, I will say, though, that one of the things I love about the Olight is the attachment method. Okay, it's just this lever right here. You throw it to open it, throw it to close it, you don't have to adjust the um, the tension on it at all. Somehow it's just perfect. I'd like to know if you threw that over and over and over and over, if that would wear down the tension and it would get wobbly. I wonder if that would happen. I don't know. As of right now though, and after many hundreds of rounds and a class uh, pushing it in and out of a holster over and over, the tension is still perfect, still perfect. So that right there is one of the biggest selling points on the Olight. Whereas with something like the TLR1, what you've got is this plate right here that's kind of, you know, kind of goes in, where is it? Yeah, this one right here. You gotta push this in, that kind of pushes that plate out, and that gives you the, uh, the ability to sort of lock it onto your pistol like so. Now it's locked in place, but I still have to rotate this a bunch in order to get it uh, tightened down. And that's kind of one of my pet peeves. It's always been one of my pet peeves about the TLR1. If I want to take it off, you know, I want to cinch it down nice and tight so it doesn't fall off, right? But to take it back off, I gotta like stick a penny in here and like rotate that real hard in order to get it off my pistol. And again, if I'm gonna take a gun to a range, I don't have a holster uh, for that gun that holds the light as well, then I've gotta take this off in order to use it at the range. So that becomes um, a slight hassle, a small hassle. Not a big hassle, a little tiny hassle. Uh, next one to show you is this guy right here, the Next Torch WL10 executor. And um, again, not going to give you lumen counts because they're going to vary over time. Prices are fairly comparable with all these, I believe. This one was a really good price when I first uh, reviewed it. Um, it's back up to around 100 bucks, I think. But I think that's kind of similar for any of these. Um, but this guy right here comes in at. 3.1 ounces, which is a nice weight for that one. Uh, getting into sort of the battery configuration here though, we've got a single one, two, three. Okay, so that's the reason why it's so light. And it's gonna be you know, not lasting as long as well because of that. Uh, deploying it, using it, uh, there's your switch right there. We didn't cover the switch on the TLR one. I actually think the switches are perfect on this. Okay, they're tactile, they're they go up and down, you know the position of it when you move it. I'll say that there's that is one thing that this has over the Olight. Given that they're these sort of rubber switches, they work, you have to kind of get used to them and they're very ergonomic in the sense that they don't smack into your fingers like hard plastic and they're very smooth and stuff, but having a real tactile response from them, not not as much. So the, uh, the TLR1, you know, that little throw like that, yeah, so good, All right? Works really, really well. Again, just putting that on the, the Glock 17 for one second. It's just a matter of throwing that down, throwing it back up. And it does have a momentary where you would kind of lift on, lift on them instead, like that. Uh, back to the WL-10. This guy, uh, I think this one also works pretty well as far as the switch. It's down, it's, it's just down, that's all it is. There's no up or down, it's just down to turn it on. But it's down on, down off. My problem with this is the mounting right here. I hate the way this thing mounts. Because you've got to like slide it all the way on like this, and then you've got to guess where that little thing is. So you're like 
trying to remember where this is and trying to remember where that is because you come become blind to both of them at this point and then you go to lock it and you're like okay is it going into that latch oh no oh you slide it back and forth a little bit till you find that little rail and now it's in nice and snug okay so that's kind of my only pet peeve about this whole system other than that works really well one more light to show you by comparison. This is the Olight PL Mini. This one just came in the mail from Olight for testing and review. So we'll be putting this through all the same tests, the drop tests, the water tests, um, etc. And just by first glance, I can see that it probably has the same issue with the screws and the plate as the PL2 does. So if I purchase this, if you purchase this, I recommend that you would pull these out, both in the front and in the back there, pull those screws out, um, degrease and Loctite all that and hopefully you'll have no issues with that plate ever beginning to shift around. As of right now, it's solid, and um, I'm probably gonna make that change to it before I go into testing. But the uh, functionality of it's very simple. You can see it's very sleek, very slim. Uh, recharges right here by way of their magnetic uh, recharger, so it's got kind of an internal battery on it. Um, putting it on the Glock 17 to kind of see how it fits and how it looks. Let's show you that. You can see that it's a bit recessed from the muzzle, but the switches are very accessible. Those are hard plastic switches that don't give an audible click, and we'll talk all about that in the review. Then if we throw that onto the PL, or sorry, the P320, a lot of P sounds. P, throw it on there, and you've got sort of more or less a flush fitting, um, uh, flush with the muzzle on that and that one there, but again, very functional. So yeah, that's a look at the PL Mini, let's go ahead and get the weight on it, just so we've got that reference. It's gonna be much, much lighter than any of the other lights at 2.2 ounces, so really, really good weight, uh, and doesn't really interfere, doesn't really call much attention to itself. Setting it side by side with the uh, PL2, there's kind of a look at how the two um, match up with one another. Okay, so putting out 400 lumens on this guy according to their advertising, which is gonna be a little bit less over time, most likely, but um, I think that's a pretty ideal level for indoor use and certainly better in that, that particular way uh, than the PL2. So that's kind of a look at the PL Mini. Stay tuned for much more on that one. All right guys, to wrap things up with the PL2 Valkyrie from Olight, there was one fixable failure which we talked about. I feel like that's not a deal breaker simply because now that I know about it, now I know how simple it is, I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with it in the future. Again, it's up to you to decide if that's a deal breaker for you. Huge lumen counts, 1200. A little bit blinding indoors, very powerful outdoors. Overall, I would say that this is a weapon light worth having. It's up to you to decide whether it's going to fit well into your system, though. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking around for the review. I'm the Late Boy Scout. We'll talk to you later.